This is the Toyota Avensis 2006 model with a 2.2 D4D 150 engine and a 6 speed manual gearbox. There's no hints manual for this car so what I'm going to show you today is how to place a coolant. So first of all I'm going to pop the hood. Just looking at the, under the bonnet at the labels we have here. We recommend 100,000 mile replacement for the coolant. And if we go over here, this shows you how to replace coolant. So, first one I'm going to ignore. Have your Toyota dealer replace coolant? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Well, at the minute, the engine is still too warm to replace the antifreeze. So, rather than scold myself, I'm just going to open the bonnet. Um, take the cover off just to aid the cooling process hopefully in a half an hour an hour or so yeah that's that's burning that hopefully an hour or so it'll be cool enough to um, drop out the engine so the engine's cooled down a little bit more so first thing I'm going to do is going to take this plastic um, piece off so I can get a better look at the radiator and get a better look to see where the, the bottom hose is. Just keep these by because you'll need these when you put this back on. Looking at the engine, so you've got the expansion tank here and you have the radiator here. This is the, the top hose to the radiator. To make things a little easier, I'm going to take this top bit off so I can get my hand down. So that is the hose clip that we need to remove. Now at the moment, the hose clip is pointing downwards so if I can somehow squeeze that to make it come round I will do. Next thing I'm going to do is jack the car up because underneath the engine is more plastic trays. To enable the coolant to drop into the container that I've got I need to remove that next. The car's nicely jacked up now. You can see this uh, plastic under tray. Um, I'll need to come off. I'll get these off. 10mm bolt there or a uh, Fill up the screwdriver. I'm going to take this off so there's more of these. And every so often you'll get one of these. What you'll need for this is a little screwdriver. Just take that out gently. As soon as that's out, then take that off and that comes off. And this comes in two parts. That bit and that bit. Let's keep them bits aside and move on to the next one. Okay, now the bits are all off. Just angle it a bit. And there we go. We've accumulated quite a bit of plastic so far. What you need to do this is get is invest in some long nose pliers so that you can get down into there. Once you've squeezed that clip with the long nose pliers, you can then take off the bottom hose and the water will come gushing out. So be ready with your trays because it goes everywhere. As you can see from the top, you can see the bottom radiator hose and where and the pipe which I've just taken off. Let me go a bit faster and loosen the top bit from the expansion tank. I'll just pump a little bit. Just try and, try and get as much out as possible. Because you never actually, just like a, an oil change, you never actually get rid of all the old coolant. There always will be a little bit left in. So I'm just going to leave it there for about 10-15 minutes. 
so what I have here is the coolant that I'm going to be putting in. Now I went to Halfords for this and it cost me £20 for that and the system takes 8.2 litres and that is 5 litres and you mix it 50-50 so it's about 10 litres worth. So that means I've got a little bit to spare. With that spare I'm going to flush out the remaining rubbish at the bottom of the radiator. Now you can't put water by itself um, as a substitute for antifreeze, it has to be mixed or it has to be ready mixed at antifreeze. So I'm going to measure half of this out into here and then I'm going to fill it up with water and then drain the system. Okay. What a pretty colour. It's about a litre there. And it should start coming through any minute. Well, I've left it about 20 minutes now. And it's dripping just slightly. But I'm fairly satisfied that will drip for hours. So, let's just see how that goes. Don't worry about that rag. So that's the colour of the stuff that came out. And we've got that tray there. So now I need to put the bottom hose back on. Once the clip is back on, we can now top up the system. Put the funnel on, and with a 50-50, we can start pouring that back in. So the water isn't actually going down anymore, but only half the coolant's gone in. We'll now run the engine just for a few seconds to get it circulated, but not too long because the engine will rely, will rely on the coolant to cool down. Don't overfill because it'll come out the overflow like it is there. Going back to the instructions on the inside of the bonnet, as the engine is warming up and idle, every so often you've got to run it at 3000 rpm for 5 seconds and then 45 seconds at idle and do this for a few minutes. So now we're running it to tick over, for, uh, we've done it for a little over 10 minutes now and according to the instructions on the front of the bonnet. As you can see it's just starting to come off the coal now and the, uh, it's starting to get a bit of heat out of the air vents and I'm just making sure that there's no air locks in the system. If we come round to the front um, we can see See that it's just starting to come through now, which means that perhaps the uh, yeah, just there you can just see the water circulating around the expansion tank. Once you've put enough coolant in and the engine's warm through, just use the guide on the side to see how much coolant you need in. So you've got a lower mark and a full mark, and that's it. Referring back to the sticker on the inside of the bonnet, the first coolant replacement is done at 100,000 miles or 160,000 k, and thereafter replaced by the recommended schedule. And in the handbook it says 50,000. So the first one is 100,000, the second one is 50,000, then 200. Let me know if you've got a car with that much mileage. I'd be very interested to hear from you.